on GoSuffolkRams.com. From Boston, Massachusetts, welcome to Suffolk Sounds, the official show for Suffolk University Athletics. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining me for yet another episode of Suffolk Sounds. I'm your host, Nick Peranick. Today's episode features an interview with two-sport athlete, Ali Rodriguez, of women's soccer and women's indoor and outdoor track and field. That conversation was really great as we kind of dove in to her role as a captain on the three teams that she's on. Uh, she's on three teams, technically, uh, two different sports, um, and she's got a unique uh, experience coming up here in the spring as she kind of has to balance her, her workload with two sports going on uh, here in the month of April. Um, We'll get back to that in just a moment, but first let's review some happenings from around the Suffolk Athletic Department. First, the Suffolk SAC has teamed up with the Black Student Union Club to fundraise for the Center for Teen Empowerment with the goal of providing positive individual, institutional, and social change for individuals. SAC and BSU are looking to raise $500 uh, to donate. Please visit the GoFundMe. You can find that at gosuffolkrams.com. Uh, Next, Suffolk Athletics is once again joined forces with Counseling Health and Wellness here at the university to bring awareness to 2021 Sexual uh, Assault Awareness Month, that's shortened to SAAM. Ram Nation has taken to social media to speak out against sexual assault, harassment, and abuse with great messages of support from allies to survivors. To join Ram Nation in the efforts, please visit the National Sexual Violence Resource Center's website to join the hashtag 30 days of SAAM uh, challenge. And finally today, the Suffolk volleyball team will be sporting new uniforms for a good cause in the 2021 spring season, as the squad announced last week that they'll be wearing autism awareness jerseys during the month of April. The jersey features puzzle pieces on the sleeves that represent the autism spectrum's disorders complexity, as well as many different colors, which are meant to depict the, the diversity of those living with the condition. Those uniforms will be worn twice before being auctioned off in May with proceeds going to the Family Autism Center. That's a great initiative from the Rams. Uh, All three are uh, as they get back on the court here in the month of April. Major props to them for uh, uh, to assist in this month long nationwide effort Uh, and more information on that auction of the jerseys will come uh, over time. So just stay tuned. And to stay up to date on all this news in the world of Suffolk Athletics, uh, make sure to bookmark our website, gosuffolkrams.com, and turn on notifications for both Twitter and Instagram for at gosuffolkrams. And now back to today's interview. Psychology major Ali Rodriguez serves as a captain for both Ashley Van Vetchen's women's soccer squad, as well as Will Feldman's track and field programs in her third year with the Blue and Gold. Allie has a unique experience entering the spring. This is what I mentioned earlier uh, in a season unlike any other, as we all know, where two of her sports are competing simultaneously. So she's got a lot to juggle coming up here in the next month. During our chat, Allie provided some insight into the two sports spring, as well as highlighting some aspects of her leadership roles throughout the regular seasons as well, and also provided the motivation that has pushed her to not become just a conference champion and not only shot put, but also javelin all of that and so much more. That interview starts right now. Allie, thanks so much for coming on the podcast today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm super excited. Awesome. Well, let's get right into it then. Um, You know, we're looking now forward to a spring season. It might be a little confusing for you coming up with, as you play two spring sports, I guess we could say right now, but you're a junior three sport uh, athlete here at Suffolk. Um, You come to us from North Andover, Massachusetts. You're studying psychology, um, but you do compete on the soccer as well as the indoor and outdoor track and field teams. Um, So let's start off with like why you chose Suffolk and how you're able to compete on all three of those teams. Yeah, um, I chose Suffolk because one, I really like the city. Um, My mom actually came to Suffolk. So that's how I got to know about it. Um, And I was also introduced to by Will and he kind of showed me around and I came in toward and he kind of talked me into coming and then it was always on like the back burner of schools because I wanted a really big school. But um, I think the city really caught my eye. It was something completely different from like living on a campus and it was closer to home, but it felt completely different. And the fact that I got to do two sports or three, three seasons was the icing on the cake. Yeah, you mentioned, you know, you're not too far from home. You're about the same distance 
about Esme to the city um, from our hometowns. You know, you played local sports growing up around here. What's it like, you know, going to school in the city? Because you grow up and you're like, oh, I could take the train to Boston. Like people take it for granted around here. But now that you're actually living in or been in school in the city, what's that been like for you? It's been totally different. Um, I love that I can, I'm just kind of on my own, um, especially just like that college feel of not being home. Um, but I like how it's like, there's people everywhere. There's always something to do. Um, and just like getting to like walk through the city all the time. Like, like you said, like I did take it for, um, take it for granted when I was at home as a kid, like I was like, Oh, Boston, like it's so far away, but like it really wasn't. And now living in it, it's just like a great experience. And the city of Boston has been very good to you, you know, and Suffolk as well, uh, as you're able to compete athletically here in Eastie and in downtown Boston. Um, you know, what's it been like for you? Let's start off with soccer here um, as we go in order through your seasons. Um, soccer last year um, was your last season uh, last fall, and you guys finished up in the GNAC quarterfinals. Um, but in that regular season, you went 10 and six overall with seven shutouts. You had a lot of personal success. Um, what can you kind of attribute that personal success and team success to? Yeah, I think it was definitely our team chemistry that really made the difference. Um, comparing from my first, my freshman year here and my sophomore year, my sophomore year was a lot, um, was different because I think that team chemistry was really high. Like we were all just super close and like learning to play with each other definitely made a huge difference. So I would say our team chemistry and um, just like our overall playing together was really different and contributes to both my success and the team's success. Yeah, and you can tell just looking at the records from your first season to your second season that, you know, things gelled for you, for you guys as a team. Um, and now let's fast forward here. Um, this unfortunate, obviously, that this fall was canceled, but now, you know, we've rescheduled some games to the spring. So what are you guys looking forward to in your third season now uh, with the soccer team here at Suffolk? Yeah, I'm looking forward definitely to playing against new teams and definitely seeing how the team works with our new freshmen. We had a lot of freshmen coming in. So I'm excited to see what it's like playing games with them. Um, I wish our practices could have been like um, more intense like they used to be, but with COVID and everything, I think everybody's really doing their best and everybody's still giving it all. So I'm excited to see how as a team, we can pull that together and play these games. So you've been in these, the, the same place these freshmen have been in uh, as a newcomer to the squad. And now that you're a captain, what have you and the other captains and Coach Van Vetchen been really saying to the new guys, especially now in a season where it's like so unpredictable um, with COVID going on? And like you said, it's not as intense. It might not be as structured. But what have you been saying all along to keep them going and keep them, everyone motivated? Yeah, um, I definitely trying to build a sense of community. I know it's really hard with um, – COVID, COVID and everything, we don't really get to hang out as much as we would normally. Um, but definitely trying to keep in touch, you know, getting to know each other a lot better at practice and um, just reminding everybody, you know, how serious the program is and how like how important it is that we want build a community within the team and to remember like why we're there, like why we're playing. And now let's let's move sports here into track. Uh, I guess we'll talk about track for a little bit as you're an indoor and outdoor athlete uh, and captain here for Coach Feldman squads. Um, so let's first talk about indoor a little bit. Um, in your first season, you finished seventh at the GNAC uh, championships in shot put um, your first year. And then your second year, you were the shot put champion for the GNAC. So talk to me a little bit about that because you don't just jump seven places overnight. So what was that? What was the determination with you? What kind of training did you do to get to get to that uh, top spot in the GNAC? Yeah, uh, freshman year was definitely a challenging year. You know, I met um, Coach Morris and he's been a great help. Um, he's definitely taught me a lot more than I've learned in high school because my coaches in high school weren't ne necessarily like throwing coaches. Why like, Tim has a beautiful track record. Um, and so he kind of changed my technique freshman year, which was a real big change, made it a lot like really difficult. Um, but coming in sophomore year definitely was a lot better because I like understood it better. So I could work on what I already had and um, definitely just the support from my team too. Um, the track team became a lot closer my sophomore year than we were freshman year. So that definitely helps a lot too when you have your teammates cheering you on. Well, you can't say that, you know, your whole experience here, your freshman year was, was tough because if you look at your outdoor season, you were the champion in Javelin. Yeah. Um, I like Jav a lot. It's always just been like one of those things that like, 
it was definitely different than shot put and discus. Um, so I really liked it and having coach Morris too made a huge difference in my throwing. So, um, yeah. What are you looking forward now with track? It looks like, um, you guys have a couple matches scheduled or excuse me, meet scheduled, um, for the spring as well as soccer. Um, so what are you guys all looking forward to? I know that I've seen the team in and out of the weight room and uh, running around as well. Um, what are you guys looking forward to, especially in the women's side? I already got the men's perspective in a, in a, in a past episode, Matias, but what can you tell me about, uh, you know, what you guys are looking forward to here, uh, pushing forward into the spring, especially now joining the CCC? Mm -hmm. um, we're definitely looking forward to getting that chance to compete. Um, it's been really hard just like, you know, getting to train. I mean, everybody has to train, but um, it's hard to like keep training and not have like meets to look forward to. So we're all really excited about that. And I think just being together as a team as well, since it's like, um, just like soccer, like not being able to be together a lot because of COVID um, will definitely make a difference in like showing these freshmen and the rest of us just like what we're about. Yeah, how hard has it been for you personally to push along, um, you know, do your exercises, do your workouts, do your routine, throw the jab, throw the shot put, how hard has that been for you to do and like push yourself? And do you have anyone else on the team that's been pushing you or that you work well with uh, in the off season that you've had so far? Yeah, um, definitely teammates on both teams have been really helpful. Um, it's definitely hard to like, you know, see the big picture. Like we're looking forward to next season. Um, it is hard to keep training like that, but you have to remind yourself that this is for next season. You need to get better as if you would any other season. So another thing last year that you participated in before COVID was in January last year, you went, I think for a week it was, to Costa Rica for a teaching exchange program. Um, that was right before COVID hit and then everything went crazy. The world shut down. So it must have been nice to get away and get down to Costa Rica before everything happened. But what was that trip like? Can you kind of just talk me through that? Yeah, I really enjoyed that trip. I've never been out of the country like that before. So that was definitely... Um, a challenge for me but I was like one of the good kind of challenges that you look forward to um it was really nice I got to get to know some of the kids in my education department that I hadn't really known or I wasn't close with um and I got close with my teacher as well and it was nice just like getting that experience teaching um in another country too it kind of opened your eyes up to things um it was for our like our TESOL program so it's um teaching emergent bilinguals uh English so it was just really cool, you know, going to Costa Rica and being in a classroom and seeing how their teachers teach them English and how like they work with their curriculum and how their classrooms work. And then I even got the chance to teach a few classes, which was really awesome. Wow, that's that's really cool. And, you know, we see here at Suffolk a lot, you know, we do have a wide range of uh, study abroad options for semesters and stuff, but you don't hear as much about that week long program or, or something you can do and just you know, kind of go and teach for a week. Um, and kind of be right in the classroom with, with other people like that. Um, what's, it, what's it been like, you know, studying psychology and you have your two minors in sociology and uh, as well as education, as you mentioned, what's that been like and, and what other opportunities have you gotten from Suffolk academically? Yeah, um, definitely the Costa Rica one was a big outstanding um, academic um, opportunity, um, but I definitely like being in the psych department. Um, I've always been interested in psych, so um, it's been really nice. You know, I kind of, I like the research department, which was cool, um, getting to experience that. And um, just adding sociology and education has really like helped open my eyes to like um, real life experiences, as well as just like different courses within my, um, about, like my course load. <laughs> Um, do you take anything? I know it's not sports psychology, but you're still taking psychology classes as your as your primary major. Um, so what do you take from those classes and put into, uh, you know, your game day or your practice routine? Have you taken anything from from what you've learned? Yeah, uh, being a psych major has definitely helped. You learn little bits like tricks and stuff. Uh, definitely before games or before meets helps. Uh, just like knowing like those thoughts that you're having or like how they'll affect your body or how they'll affect like the way you look at things. So definitely training my own, like using those tricks to like train yourself to not think a certain way or to just remind yourself like all the things you already know. So um, yeah, being a psych major has definitely helped a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure. And, you know, it's, it's got to be tough to balancing, you know, school and then two separate sports and, you know, training for both. 
Um, how do you use, you know, the training from one sport to another? Because right now there's a huge debate, uh, especially with like younger kids and high school student athletes as well um, about, you know, being, uh, should they be focused on one sport or should they be multi-sport athletes? What, what have you taken from like this debate and where, where do you stand on it? And where do you like stand on it at Suffolk? Um, definitely for me, being a multi-sport athlete has given me consistency in a way. Um, you know, constantly being on a schedule really helps me with getting my other work done. Um, it does make it difficult when it comes to like finding jobs or things like that, but um, definitely like helps me stay on track with everything that I need to do. Um, yeah. And as for like the multi-sport athlete debate, um, what have you, you know, other than scheduling, has it helped you cross cross sport uh, from sport to sport? Has your training influenced your training in another sport? And has it, has it progressed you? Cause you go season to season right through. Um, do you get tired as you get towards the spring or do you feel like you're just, just getting warmed up through the fall and winter? Um, I've always done multiple sports, so I'm used to doing that. I really like doing multiple sports. I think having the ability to, um, you know, switch it up a little bit does help and does keep me motivated. I think if I, was focused completely on one sport, I would maybe feel a little bit of that burnout just because it's so repetitive. Um, but I think for me getting to switch up sports really helps because I get like re-energized with the new season, I get excited and it brings back all those emotions. And so like you find, like you get a new love for it every season. Um, so where are your favorite places to compete? Uh, whether that be home or away, and who do you like to compete against? Uh, let's start with track. I really like competing anywhere, um, anywhere with a good, you know, field, a nice throwing area. I hate being thrown to the back of like the woods, which is a lot of the time what happens. Um, definitely changes your, your game mode too, if you're thrown into the woods, but um, a nice throwing area definitely helps me a lot. And now what about soccer? Where do you like to play? Who do you like to match up against when, when you've seen in the GNAC schedule or even at a conference, when you've seen a team, where, who do you circle on that schedule? You're like, I can't wait to play them. Oh, I love playing at home. And I think our team collectively likes playing LaSalle. I think they're one of our biggest competitors or um, yeah, like historically wise. Um, but I think our team matches up great with them and we definitely hold our own. So I get really excited when we go to play them because it's always going to be like, a tough game and an intense game, but it's so exciting to look forward to. And now, now with the CCC coming up here, uh, you don't get to play LaSalle as much, but who are you looking forward to now? Uh, teams that you'll be able to match up with. Uh, here I'm looking CCC. forward to all the teams we get to go against. Honestly, um, I'm looking forward to like this new sense of competition and seeing how our team will hold up against it or um, see how our team can change too. Like, even if, maybe we beat some teams really get us like I can't wait to see how much our change our team changes from that difference um that's kind of yeah. been what everyone's kind of saying right now when I when I do these interviews I kind of ask everyone about the, the change to the CCC and it's a big jump um but now looking at it you know as in terms of track um where you have big conference meets at the end of every season and you, you're all kind of especially the runners that are looking for a shot at nationals as well as well as the field athletes um, but what does that change in terms of uh, track? Because you can do a lot of scouting report in soccer. You can watch a lot of film, but there's not as much film in track. So what does that kind of change for you? Does that just motivate you to work even harder? It does. Um, definitely knowing your competition and their distances for throwing um, definitely kind of motivates you to push a little harder or work a little harder. Um, it all comes down to, too, like if you're in new, if you're looking to go to New England, you just have to hit a certain mark. Um, I find it helps when you um, are kind of like you get to know the people in your throwing um, events because they help you push each other and also it gives like that little bit of competition, but like it's more personal. Um, so yeah. That's awesome. Now you've been in the city and then like we've said, you grew up around, you know, just probably about, what about 30 minutes outside the city. Um, and now you're, now you've been in the city for a few years now. Um, now tell me a little bit of your favorite things you like to do now at Suffolk University. What do you like to do with school wise? What do you like to do outside of school? Uh, plenty of things to do around the city. So just, just run me through, you know, a day in the life. Yeah. Uh, school wise, I love being on campus. Um, being, especially this year, being at home a lot more has definitely like been a bummer just because we have such a beautiful campus and we're in the center of Boston. Um, but 
being on campus, like some of my favorite places to go is definitely Capital Coffee House. Um, was introduced to there by our team freshman year for soccer. And it's kind of just like our place to go. We always see each other in there. We're always eating in there. Um, so that's my favorite place to go. Um, some of my favorite things to do definitely is coming to La Presti Park and playing soccer just because the view is amazing. And like, um, it's just a nice spot, especially in the summer to be with like our friends. No, I mean, there's there's plenty to do around the city. Uh, plenty of, you know, you can just hop on the, on the red line, blue line, red, whatever, the MBTA and just hop anywhere around the city. Um, so it's, it's really nice. And I'm sure getting to practice too is nice. Um, you guys get to practice with the city backdrop uh, in the background and it, it's just a cool, cool park to be at. So, you know, your team freshman year showed you Capital Coffee House, but I'm sure they showed you some other things too. Um, what are some funny stories, you know, throughout your time here at Suffolk, no matter what team, just, just run me through some of the, like maybe the funniest teammates or funny stories from, from trips. Yeah. Um, I think for soccer, one of our funniest stories is, um, the time that we were taking the vans and you know we were all stressed out we thought we were going to be late to practice so we just like left in the vans and we got a text from our coach and she was wondering where we were and uh we realized that we had left coach at Ridgeway and so every time now it's like a thing like we joke about it um but we're always checking to make sure coach is in the vans when we leave um <laughs> So technically you guys were going to be on time and she was going to be late. So you should have just yeah. left her there. No problem. Just not texted her back and said, we're worried. No, I'm just kidding. That's funny. Could have flipped the switch, made it on her. <laughs> That's so no. funny though. She was, she was not happy, but it's nice because we can joke about it now. And she joked about it with us during the time too. So it wasn't like we were in big trouble, but we definitely thought we were going to be in big trouble. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and some track stories is definitely my favorite part is the van rides to um, to uh, Reggie Lewis in the winter. Just there's always something chaotic. Everybody's completely quiet in the morning, but the afternoon, once everybody's gained energy, um, me and my throwing friends are just, they're a whole chaos, but like in the best way. Yeah, no, I was talking to Matias the last time I interviewed him too. And just like, I did cross country in high school. So I know like those afternoon bus rides back or once you get a workout in and you're just on your way back, like all bets are off for what's going to happen. Everyone yeah. goes haywire. <laughs> Everybody these are like completely exhausted and just going absolutely crazy or they just have an extreme amount of energy now. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I'm glad to get some insight into both programs and it was great to chat with you today. Um, and I look forward to seeing you compete not only in soccer, but track and field as well. Uh, so best of luck in the uh, upcoming season. Thank you. It's nice talking to you too. Once again, a huge thanks to Allie for joining me today. Ram Nation, if you liked what you heard from today's episode, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Go Suffolk Rams. And make sure to subscribe to this podcast on whatever platform it is that you choose to listen to or watch us on. Until next time, stay safe, and we'll see you soon, Ram Nation. This has been Suffolk Sounds. Don't forget to subscribe, like, rate, and review however you listen to your podcasts.